Hey guys, welcome back to D&D with Filthy and Friends. Um, let's quickly introduce the players again. Uh, Adam, wave your hand. D &D, uh, our DM, Adam from Alt F4 YouTube Gaming Channel. Uh, Kevin, playing Thaddeus. Uh, Steve from Joanne Ribs Twitch and YouTube channels, playing Hello. Tim. And Dolphin from the Twitch channel, Dolphin Chemist, playing Dolphidius. And me, of course, Filthy Robot, playing Chikalth from, of course, my channel. If you don't know my channel, I don't know how you found this. No one else watches it except my, my viewers. So you must be in the wrong spot. Leave immediately. All right. And with that said... My viewers <laughs> can leave comments complaining about this. <laughs> this is get, a discrimination. Let's get started. <laughs> uh, recap of last episode. We... Uh, I would say we get to the bottom of the uh, the uh, the damp cult, but we really didn't. We got about halfway down the damp cult's uh, empire, and we decided to leave with the loot. So we uh, have made it out of the the bottom of the the middle of this dungeon, I guess, having killed everything in sight, including some dragons and named sorcerers and this type of shit. We've rescued Dolphidius from the clutches of the uh, abusive hag. Thank and, you. Uh, Probably have nightmares for the rest of your life, but you're at least here, not physically intact, but emotionally, perhaps. And, uh, finally, we are, uh, returning to town with our, our, our wonderful loot. And that's the plan. That's what we're going to pick up, I think, Adam. Last, if I remember correctly, the end of last episode, we were, uh, slamming the boat into the wall, trying to get it out of the harbor. I think we were working on sinking it and seeing how hard it is to recover our loot from the bottom of the river. Yeah, see so if we could bait was... the damp cold out. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely right. You will be absolutely astounded to know as well. This grid is perfectly aligned. Woo, oh what? My God. Oh, so my. you can just move around freely. I've never got <laughs> a boat. I'm so not used to that now, though. Also, this is now your boat. And I must insist that right now as a party, you name the boat. Is it a boat or a ship? Ship. It's a ship? It's a ship boat? Well, it's, a, it's at least 25 feet. God, I, I hate to say this, but I think technically so we're cool. still under Tim's leadership for this portion of... Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, <think> we, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it lasts for long, but I believe this would be technically Tim's domain. He gets to name the boat? It doesn't seem fair Are to you me crazy? either. We didn't know immediately. <laughs> no, we we have we have a temple inside our in, inside our keep named Shadowlatifus or something. His his aunt his aunt on his on his like father's side. I'm going to call it Agatha. Of course you are. <laughs> Just Gar. I have fond memories of her. <laughs> Just, Just Gar. Gar. Just Gar. <laughs> it should be the name of it. It's named Agatha, but you can call it Gar for short. Okay. <laughs> All right. Gar. The great ship Gar? Gar. <laughs> also known as Just Gar. <laughs> Alright. Excellent. Well, that's exciting. So, um... So, I want to clarify. It's named Agatha, or it's just Agatha? No, it's <laughs> Agatha. Agatha. <laughs> a worthwhile question for Tim. Agatha. Yes. Just... It's pointing the wrong way. We need to head south. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can see you've sailed before. And if you scroll down here, you can see to the bottom of the boat as well. Oh, that's oh, so boat. fancy. It's, it's so yeah, you guys actually. You I guess it's a boat. double decker. I, uh... These um, these crossbows at the back, or ballistas, I guess as they would be, are real. Oh, it has weapons! This is incredible. Um, Tim, you actually can't move because you're holding the wheel. So unless you let go oh. of the wheel and move away, okay. that's... <laughs> I mean, you can do that. That's Where are the life rafts? Probably... Uh, you can see at least four one to be affixed, but it's just not there yet. Um, so, the Agatha appears... is such a marvel of modern engineering that you don't even need the life rafts. Tim, I'm going to tell you... We have some for show, but you can't even get them off the ship if we were to hit an iceberg or something. I was about to it's say... incredible. Why are they? Why are they in the hold? We need these on deck so we can actually use them when you run into say. things. Yeah, they're they're in the fucking hold. How useful is that? <laughs> it's so when the side caves in, you can go straight yeah. out the side. Exactly. <laughs> right. Sinking the boat will raise. You just on second pass. It seems like those will probably be pretty useful, judging by the grating noise we're hearing as we're like slowly <laughs> <laughs> scraping our way out. Oh man. We haven't actually moved off the uh, seawall that uh, Tim ran into. 
previously. You're basically just gently moving forwards now, away from the keep, but with like no real like no one's put the sails up or anything. No one's done anything. Say... Tim's just kind of moving the wheels to keep the boat kind of at least in a straight <laughs> line. The edge Are there or... gently? Is that the same adjective you'd use when you're like filing stone against stone and like smoothing out a spearhead or something? Like gently. Well, it was loud and like grindy, but it wasn't very fast. I see. You mean slowly? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm. I'm with you. So, uh, how long is our trip? Let's just let's think real quick. How long can we expect to reasonably spend on this boat? Not long. Well, it was like a two-hour oh. or like a two-day yeah. oh, maybe. Fucking don't remember. No, no, it's a it's a long ride, but I don't know how fast the river goes. Was it? Oh yeah, it's uh, okay. eight hexes, eight hexes north or something. Oh, we have even like a whole thing One, about two, movement three, somewhere. Four, four speeds. Five, seven, eight, nine. We're going through nine hexes because the river is a bit windy. What's the ratio of hex to miles? So one hex is four miles, so it's thirty-six miles. Okay. Mm, yeah, or thereabouts. So we're horse, not going horses move all the way. Eight miles per hour on marked roads. <laughs> so we get four. It's Doesn't like four. Yes, it is. It's like four and a bit miles. Like it would be four and a bit hours by horse if we were running marked road this length. This is okay. this is a river flowing in the direction we want to go. I would say you're probably going to move at um, maybe double that. Double that? We're going to be there in two or hours. maybe one and a half, so 12. Um, can I make a perception check? Uh, I just want to see if the wheel that Tim is currently gripping his hands and spinning around around is actually connected to any cables that maybe are connected to the rudder, or if he, this is just <laughs> like for show. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so the good news is we're going to crash into the barge right in town. Oh, so you, 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 so you turn around out. to look to see... Uh, you know, to maybe analyze the wheel and what's going on. And as that happens, you see uh, Tim kind of turn it a bit too far left and the whole boat jars that way. And you you, you you know that it is fixed to the rudder, but not because you saw it, because the whole boat shook you as he turned. I assume coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt my perception. <laughs> right. I rolled to disbelieve. All right, all right. Okay. So, so uh... as I was saying, the good news is we're going to end up where we intend to end up whether we went to or not, just like a log in a river. Like, we yeah. could turn this damn thing sideways and end up where we want to end up. The problem is ever going to be getting home. Have you ever seen, so like, like a, a boat come in a little bit too fast to, like, a, a pier, you know, where, like, we're just going to slam through and take out infrastructure of a city, piss off I think the guard, and likely. be sunk? Yeah, I, I was imagining more the Johnny Depp scene where he steps off the top of the mast onto the pier <laughs> as his boat, boat sinks behind him. <laughs> Equally good. Probably won't get the loot that way, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be very difficult to bring Agatha home. But there was another boat in the in the keep, right? So we no. get to do this Agatha what twice sail. before this is a problem. Sail. You could still sail upstream. It's not so bad. Okay. And we we, well, still we, we would river. have to raise the sails. Though. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to actually use the boat. Right. right. At this point, we're doing the driftwood technique. <laughs> yeah. And that's fine. But drifting's relaxing. Right. Are There's we... not a whole bunch of scurrying about. No one's yelling about sails or anything. It's it's peaceful this way. Yeah. A time of respite. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Agatha's a beauty, but um, I don't really want to put up sails. I'm also dubious of a, a crew of four can handle this all right. I don't know. Oh, sure. This is an it's... easy boat for four. Yeah. In fact, I, I think, you know, so my character walks over to the side of the boat and says, ah, what a beautiful day here on the river. Finally back beneath the sun again, enjoying the calming sounds of the water. No better time for a nap. And I walk downstairs and I go in bed. I uh, think that's a great idea, Delphidius. Oh, uh, there's only one bed. But there's <laughs> only one bed, so... <laughs> but there's, no. not a, there's not a chance in hell I will be under the deck while uh, Tim pilots this, and I'll sleep <laughs> on the deck. Actually, there are, I think, four cots in the um, in the prow there. Um, I think, those I think are that's dead fish. Yeah, here. Yeah, like, I, they could be hammocks. No, I think, they're I hammocks. think those are hammocks, which allows us to be killed first when we ram into something. <laughs> <laughs> Worst fucking place to be sleeping. You're peacefully in your dreams as Tim slams into the side you of something. You guys can renovate this boat as much as you like. <laughs> 
an entire pier comes in through your yeah. through your side window. <laughs> Great. Oh, man. Okay. There's there's probably a whole bunch. Well, no, we, we haven't owned it long enough for there to be patches on the front. Know what we said last episode, so I'll say it now that everyone's level seven, by the way, just for the viewers. Oh yeah, I forgot we did level up while we were. Uh... I don't know whether you the overlays or anything, but. Uh, no, but we I didn't, have I didn't not rested, right, Adam? What? We have not rested though, no, right? You are still no. like. So is it possible know. for us to work out how to get a long rest in? Uh, well, we haven't been awake long enough yet, either. Yeah, you took right? like I don't know, yeah. three or four. All right, so we have to go to the barge right in and do some stuff, and then we'll sleep in the tavern or something. Yeah, let's float down the river. Yep. Uh, and uh, I don't think we. I mean, if you really want to really see how fast you can get this thing going, just let me know, and I'll let myself off ahead of time. Um. Yeah. Delphidius, I, I think you should have a few water walking spells prepped so that we can just step off and run for it. I, I gotta say, it's a little bit of a shame that I don't have any water walking spells prepped right now, so... <laughs> I, can, I, th uh, I think that's your main job. Anytime we're doing any river work, your main job is to like sleep ahead of time, prep the water walking spells so we can run yeah. when we need to. Thaddeus in particular struggles or to waddle. Swim. Waddle. Is <laughs> Although... Fair. I think so, Thaddeus could just walk along the bottom of the river to the shore. I think he'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. trudge out of the sea like Godzilla. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> so is there any way we can close the water gates to our keep yep. as we leave? Yep. Uh, it's got like uh, a little like clicker. No, no, like as you leave, you'd have to like someone have to get out and, you know, wind the thing around and then get back on the boat. But you guys know and saw that it was a mechanical manual item. So you could just <laughs> wait and someone does that and <laughs> is this happening <laughs> what are you like for looks like uh, Kevin and Delphidius volunteered alright um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't even know how you get into that building from out here on the river don't worry about it Thaddeus your heavy armor will protect you in case anything goes wrong I don't know why I stay with you people. I'll just hold the boat still while you're getting it done, Tim says <laughs> as he struggles with the wheel and the boat begins to drift downriver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny stuff. Um, yeah, we don't have, we're not even leaving anyone behind to secure this place, are we? Nope. We're going to have to just here. take it over again. Uh, Sniven's, you know that, Sniven's coming back. You know that Sniven will be back in, uh, hang on, where are we? Where are we? Two days. Oh, I see. So he's gone to Red Larch to take, I nearly said prisoners, um, the, uh, the people you rescued back. Sure. Uh, and he'll be back to the keep. In about no, two days. That's not what we asked him to do. We were going to do that. He was supposed to sit here and live out his life behind these walls. Yeah. I guess you'll have to speak to him when you see him next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're floating downstream happily. Happily floating downstream. Did Daddy just make it back alive or is he? We just consider him gone. Yeah, no, you guys. You know, if you wanted to do that before you actually got the boat going, kind of thing, you could have done that before. And or, I, like... I imagine the scene is kind of like Thaddeus has a rope. We've given him a rope, and he's like, the boat's just going. We're like, you'll have. We don't think you can catch up, but then we'll just let the rope kind of coil out, and then he'll he gets the thing down just in time, and gets yanked off his feet, and he spends like oh. an hour climbing up that rope to get back on the moving moving boat. That's what I assume, anyways. You know. You all hate me so much. <laughs> that was my best rope, actually. <laughs> Didn't your best rope burn up? It's a silk rope. You got rid well, of the nice. So that's rope. how that works, yeah. though. When you lose one rope, this now becomes his only other rope. It's his default best rope. So. Yeah. I'm buying a yeah. rope in town, by the way. That's a good idea. We have six. So, with, no with no sails up, you'll go at six. Six so miles an hour. At a kind of, yeah, sort of normal Three. horse speed at normal terrain. You know what? I'm just kind of excited not to be fighting the dominions of the, or the uh, denizens of the deep here. So uh, I don't mind Amazon. relaxing. A it's a beautiful there. day. What time well, of what day? What is that? That's, that's only three hours to get down? 3 p.m. Yeah, 
Yeah, we get there about dinner time. Yeah, so, yeah. It'd be awkward if we got there at four thirty. We'd have or five rather. We'd have an hour to chill before six eating. Six miles an hour. Oh, yep. are we? So we need like that's what I understand. So it's like that's, that's with the sails down with no wind. Oh, it's six hours. That's too late. We're gonna miss dinner. Um, I don't think I care. Yeah, six hours. I'm yeah. happy with that. All right. I'm busy napping, so I'm not particular. Yeah. Sure. You can get a short rest in. Maybe exchange some stories of past conquest. He's talking sexual conquest, Delphidius. Oh, okay. We're mostly interested in hearing your story. <laughs> the hag. Yeah. Okay, so oh, we could learn more about Delphidius. Let's. Okay. <laughs> Once we get the boat going right, and we're confident in the in the steering, um, maybe two of us could head downstairs and just sit. Uh, as Dolphidius sleeps and just look at his face, waiting for him to wake up. <laughs> and then when he wakes up, you can ask him more about who he is, because we need to know. And I'm I'm just gonna be playing with uh, you know, my minor illusion spell and creating faces in front of my face occasionally. The hag, uh, among other things. <laughs> no, I'm uh, not. I'm wait, not gonna torment wait a Dolphidius. Not this other. far from his face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's steering the ship? <laughs> it's on autopilot, Thaddeus. These things are very advanced. Mechanical contraption. That's right. All right, so... I'm hanging over the rail just a little. Is anyone going to assist Tim in his sailing, or is anyone going to help sort of man the ship? I'm, I'm standing up at the front going, watch out for that stick over there. You're getting closer to the left bank. Not sure at all. That is the standing at the front going, I'm the king of... And then just on the <laughs> fucking bow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Steve and Kevin both make a survival to see if we can get the ship going in the right direction. It's down the river. Down river. <laughs> what would you have to fail on that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, for, who, for all we know, Tim might turn the boat rather the wrong way. Sure. Um, and then you can do... Acrobatics or athletics to make sure you can actually hold the wheel correctly. Okay. I'm. Uh, I am going to. Should I run back there and not grab you. the wheel? No, not you. You're, you're stood at the front, directing him. <laughs> yes, but when the wheel starts spinning him. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, so Dolphin's asleep. What's Chuckles doing? Um, I'm waiting till Tim is distracted, then I'm casting prestigitation and making the wind seem to be blowing across his face from the direction opposite the way the wind is actually going. Okay. So you guys, uh, yeah, you, you, you seem to be taking the right course down the river. Um, it's a bit turbulent. Boats seem to sort of be jarring to the left and then jarring to the right a bit as, as, as Tim's really suffering trying to get... His, his grip on this wheel. But, you know, you don't seem to crash into anything. There's a couple of big bumps, but the ship seems to be intact. And you can't sail down the river. You know what we need to invest in? We need to, you know the yeah. cattle uh, the cattle catchers on the front of trains? We need one of these on our boat. Sure. Wouldn't that be perfect? It could be good for buoyancy if it's, like, straight iron. But <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I, I, and I just, you just kind of, like, front tip the well, boat. Well, then, the, then the, it's even better there. because now we're, like, we're, we, like, weighted down in the front as we yeah. ram things. So I think uh, when I feel the boat lurch under Tim's uh, magnificent uh, command uh, in a touch. moment of panic, I clutch my pearl of power, uh, which is a magical item I have that lets me get back an expended spell <laughs> slot. Uh, and I get back a third, uh, basically I get back a third level spell slot uh, in preparation for perhaps having to walk away from the ship on top of the river uh, as need be. Okay. I think I think your idea of the the, the cattle guard on the front is i think we should mad max the whole ship up blades and and like launchers and yeah the only downside is we all wear except for tim we all wear either medium or heavy armor and i'm not real excited about uh setting up a, an area where we really tell our dm that we want to be about naval combat right so um pillows we want pillows on the sides and yeah, yeah. A so, hold full of this is a peaceful merchant vessel who are you saying this I'm to? I'm going you? to, in fact, raise a flag on the vessel that looks very non-sinister. <laughs> but maybe I need a history check or something to not raise like the a, Jolly Roger. I don't know. I have like just illusion. like a help. small flag or like a proper one of the big sailing flags? Uh, anything that's available. Yeah, we what? just use whatever's in the hole. Well, no. if you 
If you're going to raise the... a small flag, that's not going to affect your travel. We should you probably... Raise shouldn't we raise the water cult flag? No, no, the blue and white one... like a bad was... idea. The, the, the blue fist on the white background was... were good guys. Remember? They were... They were... Um... Mercenaries wiping the they were the guys up top wiping out bandits wiping out bandits remember <laughs> All right. oh yeah, those guys let's use that sure okay we'll, we'll take that, that as our new uh livery or whatever <laughs> I think you raise he, I think the flag of the slaughtered mercenaries well they're not slaughtered this was just a leadership change yeah <laughs> <laughs> you have inherited their keep and their flag that's right. We... They're undergoing rebranding. That's right. Mm -hmm. New management. Yeah. I like investors. Yeah. We'll, we'll buy. We'll buy a new flag some other day. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not... All right. So two hours pass. You move down. Three hexes. Uh, you roll another acrobatics for me. It's an exciting way to navigate. Okay. So the boat seems to be getting a lot more stable now, as Tim seems to be getting used to used to it, and you guys seem to be continuing on. Um, so are we going all the way down to Barge where we're Barge right. So that's going to be another what one, two, three hexes there. That's going to make it. Do we want to? Do we want to try to? I'll go ahead and turn to deck. By the way. Yeah. Um. Do we want to try to like? run this into some shallows and not go directly into the town flying a flag we don't actually own? No. That would be... I think that would be too cautious <clears throat> for us, really. I, I guess I have all the stuff in the hold I'd like to sell. It would be nice if we didn't have to carry that. It's and an awful lot of carrying. Okay. Best of luck with this. I'm standing on the rail. Yeah, same. All right, so... um, You know that Womford and the Vardrite Inn are like quite small villages and they're not exactly cities with a pier or a port um, but you can see there's maybe like small little fishing areas um, just before the bridge that you could maybe pull up close to they're not really a pier designed for a ship of your size but it might be somewhere that you could lay by is there any that we could displace by ramming like a small <laughs> ship that we could take its spot yeah. presumably they've already paid for that berth <laughs> well there's no other ships there it's just that these, these piers are you know, really small, designed for like small fishing ships. So you're I mean, suggesting if, we could displace the pier. Yeah, exactly. So we can anchor in the shallows, and then we can uh, take our little rowboats and row in. That seems very wise. I like this idea. Load them up with some loot. Sure, you guys can do that. I like that plan. All right, yeah, we'll do that. I thought these were fairly decent sized cities. Um, one, one for in particular. So, hang on. Barge right was bigger than Womford, I oh. think. I'm not sure either of them is actually on the river, anyway. Yeah, they're like separate, se separate rather, from the actual... They're not like... If you look how... Uh, let's see. Let's show you this. Like, water deep here, for example. That's right on the coast. That's going to obviously have a pier. Or like a big, you know, maybe even a port. Same with Thornhold and Neverwinter. Whereas the places you're at, they're more likely to be like small river-based villages, um, okay. so they don't really have anywhere that it's designed for your size of ship. Like the the keep was the only real place you guys have seen so far that could like really house. Then where do these assholes and... bring this boat around to? Presumably, this is a large trading river because all the cities are on this river, basically. But well, there not. there isn't there isn't really you guys haven't really encountered a city per se. No. Bunch of small you've been towns, in, yeah, that's, that's yeah you've been in like small towns, small villages. The closest like city or large place would probably be something like uh, Tribor or Yata, which is in the north part of this map. Um, they're like the big trading kind of hubs in the northern part of the valley that you're in. Okay. But these are these are a lot small. Could I practice with the ballista just to get a feel for it while we're doing this? <clears throat> what are you gonna fire at? <laughs> uh, whatever suits my fancy. I mean, maybe as we're down, as we're Maybe not as we're there and unloading, but along the way, I just wanted to see if they're in working order, take a shot. Maybe I'll shoot at a tree or something. Sure. Okay. Yeah, they're, def they're definitely in working order. Uh, there's probably oh. about 10 bolts per ballista, so that's okay. kind of your ammunition at the moment, unless you want to make more or buy more. Sure. I, I see uh, 
I see him taking shots at the tree, and I feel competitive, and I walk over to the other ballista, and I attempt to shoot at the same tree. Okay. Oh, God, can we please use all of our bolts trying to hit a tree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get this tree up. Thaddeus, hold the wheel. <laughs> I have to show these guys who's boss. Do my we, races of archery on, apply see, to this role? Yeah. We see who's actually hit the tree and who hasn't hit the tree. This is important. Sure, you can all make... Uh, what's that? A ranged attack roll with... I don't know, dex or strength, I guess. Whichever one's your Would best. Would you say the giant ballista's dex-based? Sure. Okay. And I'm getting plus two on this. Um, it's not can we have the ship back? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Are we permission in giant ballista? No. It's not a saving throw, it's just a throw, right? I don't care oh. what it is, I'll just roll a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> Do I fell the tree? So, Chakolts hits it dead in the center. In fact, it hits... So, you fired first, and it hits it dead in the center perfectly, and then um, Dolphidius comes in, and it's like, it's almost at the center, but it's slightly off to the right, and then Tim's arrives and it just falls totally wide and hits the you know the earth nearby that's what i was aiming at <laughs> i don't harm trees like you heathens i'm actually very impressed at both his aiming and his resolve not to hurt trees <laughs> uh, i take him at his word i just shake my head at the imbecile and then uh <laughs> return back I'm, I'm pleased that the, the weapon system is working on the ship i was a little bit worried it wasn't going to be functional I do wonder what the hell we have a 70-foot boat for on apparently a small fishing set of small fishing villages. But I imagine we're not going to be contested if that's uh, that's the case. And we have working oh. ballista, so that's good. Seems good. Did the Rolls ballista up rotate up, or is it only only like a firing? Is it by firing? Is it, is it a horizontal rotating thing, or is it also vertical? So you've got like a 180 horizontal, and then you've got maybe like a, I don't know, maybe 45 sort of raise up okay so if the if the fucking bird cults bother us again i could maybe put a ballista bullet through one of you them you could try oh, huh? all right perfect um does it have any rotate down if if, if like a rowboat came up to us could we shoot it or yeah. <laughs> would it would it go so it under our... <laughs> yeah. a little bit we never we're anticipated in. this <laughs> <laughs> row boys um, we're perfectly safe so actually it's a, so it's, it does say here that monford has a small dock on the river for shipping the grain from its mill. So you guys could actually pull up there. Um, All right, let's do uh, that. I, I go that. Sounds, Sounds good to me. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll pull up there. I imagine there's going to be some rolls for that, and I would love to assist in any way possible. Uh, yeah, no, you guys can pull up fine if you're just going to use the anchor, as you say. Um, you guys can, you know, yes. uh, made enough rolls to do that. And if you're going to use the anchor to sort of bring yourself in safely, then that's okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, well done, Tim. So it's getting dark. It's about 8 p.m. now. Okay. Well, uh, I suppose we should, you know, uh, find an inn for the night, get some food, sleep in some comfortable beds, and then sort out uh, some mundane matters briefly in the morning and then uh, figure out what the hell's going on. Do the, uh, do the docks seem safe? Do we need to leave a guard or anything like that? I'm looking for Chalaska Murin. What? Sounds delicious. Chalaska Tim's gonna guys? look like he heard what Shackoth said and nod and <laughs> be very affirmative. And then Tim is going to find a bar with the party's remaining 12 gold pieces or whatever we have. <laughs> Okay, so you guys arrive at the Wonford Dock. It's a tiny village. Um, you see uh, there's a very, very small handful of granaries. Uh, there are cottages. Um, there are some small, tiny local shops. Um, let's see. Yeah, so in terms of like going to a bar or anything, you guys would probably have to cross the bridge and go to the Barge Right Inn, because this is just like a small village nearby uh, that deals with like grain farming and uh, you know, granaries, etc. What did you say, Kevin? I'm <laughs> looking. <laughs> that was like a 17-minute delay. <laughs> I'm looking for Chalaska Mervin, the master of the gate guard from Barge Right Inn. So are you guys traveling to Barge Right Inn? Uh, Kevin. Well, it sounds like that's where the bars are. That's also... That's also where we have a, a 
really good positive rec rep reputation from saving dozens of people from the, the dirt cult. Yeah, I think we should uh, go there, but maybe we go there in the morning. Maybe we just get arrested. In, like, have Did a, you say arrested? Get, get arrested arrest in. Before getting Not arrested, get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that would get us That's to the like guard a camp. Great idea, Chekhov, Tim says, like over his shoulder as he's walking across the bridge. I think we're rapidly approaching the end of Tim's leadership. <laughs> Thankfully. I'm on dry land. He has nothing to guide me anymore. All right. I'll stay with Thaddeus for now. Um, my, my intent, and I'm slowly kind of wheedling, wheedling for uh, an inn and sleep and food. Uh, then we'll see if that, that happens. But I am trying to keep up roughly with the rest of the group, even if they're being idiots. Well, I want to go to the barge right and have a real inn. Uh, All right. This Absolutely. other place doesn't seem to have a... Where are our uh, horses, by the way? Oh. They're still in the keep, right? Looking at um, the damn boat. I thought we took them on the boat, but you could get maybe them we did. We could get them on the boat. We we probably couldn't what, like one, bring we them, them in on the, the, the one city horse. on the rowboat, though. When you were parked in the harbor there's like a you know there was obviously like a bridge and a walkway onto the boat that you used and you could get the horses onto that yeah. and that yeah. bridge comes with the boat and yeah, that'll horse on back. the dock so okay perfect and, and i can cast water walking on horses <laughs> throwing that out <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a willing creature when you need to I do just, that i want to put it out there do you have water riding or just water walking because it might not just water walking uh -oh. just water all right yeah. I'm not yeah. sure that you could like yeah. communicate to the horse that it could walk on the water yeah. though, right? right? Well, you can lead a horse to water, <laughs> but you can't make it walk. Yeah, oh. so I think that probably yes, and probably you got to think about that too. Can you have you ever stepped on something when you weren't really sure where the depth of it was? You know how it, like hurts you? You can hurt yourself doing that. I wonder if the horse would like break its leg as it assumes it's sinking into water, hits like ground that its surface on it. So you're saying so basically this new guy is right? killing our horses. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they call me Dolphity is the horse killer. <laughs> so I see Tim. Wait, you're Dolphity is the horse killer? <laughs> 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 just it was just an idea. I'm not saying I've ever actually killed any horses. I'm just saying hypothetically <laughs> If you were to, that's what you If we to. were to, <laughs> might be a possibility. Oh, I thought he was Dolphidius the cheese eater. My <laughs> God, I've made a mistake. Dolphidius the barbarian. Um, so which, uh, so are we going to go to the inn for an actual night's day? It seems like we can kill two birds with one stone if we go to the... Uh, oh, no bird killing in this city, Dolphidius. <laughs> no bird killing, no horse killing. What fun can be had? Um, well, can't we kill two birds with one stone by going to the uh, inn, having a drink, and getting some sleep there? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So as you guys approach, just to sort of remind you what you, where you're headed, you're coming up to a hilltop wayside inn. The site has become a walled community of ramshackled, often rebuilt wooden towers, buildings now entirely cloaking a hill that overlooks the village of Womford that you just came from across the river. As you enter, you get a very strong smell of manure and filthy mud. You can see many blacksmiths, dealers who buy and sell perhaps horses, mules, oxen, wheelwrights, sheep, wagon makers, all these places um, quite quiet and closed at the moment see different inns and stables uh, that pale in comparison to the main barge right in. There's uh, different warehouses. And there are two concentric rings of high protective walls with gates um, that are going to be firmly closed and barred behind you if you enter. Okay. So where do you guys go? The inn. All right. You guys arrive at the inn. It's quite busy tonight. You can see... Um, a uh, few familiar faces from coming here last time. You can see that a couple of the people that you rescued have settled in, and there's a couple of people um, even working to help uh, the people at the end. Well, um, I guess we're having a couple drinks, so uh, I'll head up to the bartender and uh, announce that I'd like to uh, start a tab, and I'll give them Tim's name. And Yep. And I can I roll perception to see if I notice this. So okay. I walk up behind him. Oh sure. Fuck. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Uh, I, I I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just 
you had just said. Oh, you're not trying to hide it? No. That's a great idea, Chackles. In fact, buy the entire entire house around on me, please. At which point I yell out, drinks on Tim! And uh, so uh, uh, as you approach the bar, you see uh, Nalaska, the, um, the the gentleman that would ask you to look after the bar the previous visit. Mm -hmm. And he, <clears throat> he sort of um, perks up as your arrival. Oh, welcome back, adventurers. Welcome, welcome. Oh, you don't need to pay for drinks here, as you know. You've rescued all of our friends. And uh, I can only give you free drinks. I can't give drinks to the rest of the house of free. But if you wish to purchase drinks for them, Mr. Veritim, that is entirely at your discretion. At that point, I yell out, maybe drinks on Tim. <laughs> well, I guess we can afford two rounds for the rest of the folks then. Sounds excellent. You run a fine business here, sir. Why, thank you. Uh, everyone sort of looks around, like, almost confused, but also eagerly to be maybe getting some drinks. Sure. Maybe. Well, uh, we'll do that. That's fine. We'll sit ourselves down at a table, uh, kind of a large table with plenty of room around us, and uh, sit down to have our drinks and see if anyone wants to uh, come say thanks or sit down and chat as they have their drinks. Sure. Okay. So you see, um, there's at least a handful of children that you rescued to sort of, uh, no, the you know, ha for them. happy to sort of say, see you. They sort of come over and they thank you and then they sort of walk away. And then there's a couple of the farmers that sort of come down to sort of say thanks as well. And, um, you know, take you up on your offer of a drink and sit and talk with you about, you know, what's going on and, and what you guys have done since, since you rescued them. I use, uh, when the kids come over to play, I use prestidigitation to make these little floating dolphins and sea animals just kind of in front of their eyes, just little cute tricks for them. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Is anyone confused that Sniven has turned into a barbarian? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the least. And by the way, on the screen, we're still on the boat, right? What's what? Oh, yeah. I can put you, uh, here. Ah, that doesn't matter. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, that works. It's almost better, I think. Either way. You guys are down here. All right. Sure. Okay, so it's probably getting up to, I'd say, maybe 9 p.m. now. All right. Um, Adam, as the course of the night goes on, I'm just going to, from time to time, just bring up questions about any local news, anything happening uh, around the area that anyone's heard of. Um, You're all sat at the table together, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Uh, I want to bring that up, and at some point, I want to go talk to uh, Nauskar and ask him um, how uh, the city's been in our absence and if there's been anything out of the ordinary happening. Okay. The town, I guess. Uh, What's everyone else doing? I'm uh, trying to start an argument with Tim about what animals could kill what other animals in <laughs> hypothetical one versus one death <laughs> See, a rabbit actually has the advantage over a rat if the rat approaches from behind. The hind legs of the rabbit are incredibly strong. You would not believe it. I, I sit back. I, I have my arms crossed. I nod, and then I just go, bullshit. <laughs> my entire response. I drink still in hand, not realizing that I'm stealing one of the mugs from the tavern. Walk out into the street to look for a rabbit and a rat. <laughs> okay. You roll perception. I don't think Tim is aware that things happen in places that he's not in. So I don't think he's super concerned that things have happened. Uh, you see a rat while being around. Like just running off behind the side of the inn. Ooh. Dolphidius, get out here. <laughs> I, I found up. the rat. You bring <laughs> me a rabbit. You roll investigation, filthy. Yeah. For like the people you're talking to. Sure. Um, what do you want to do, Kevin? Anything in particular? You're muted. You're muted, I think. That explains why all the brilliant things I've said over the last five minutes, no one's reacted to. Oh, oh five okay. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> I thought, how come every time Thaddeus says something really smart, everyone just talks and talks? Sure, <laughs> sure. Sorry. We know you just muted the mic that instant and unmuted it for that whole conversation. <laughs> um, I want to stay next to Chakolth for, for much of this because I'd like to hear some of that same stuff. Um, 
And I've been keeping an eye out for uh, Chalaska Mervin uh, as we went to the inn and, uh, you know, checking out the door every once in a while to see if he's wandering the streets or in here for a drink or anything. Sure. Okay. Um, you've not spotted um, her yet. Uh, she might be busy with the, you know, maybe guards or something or something perhaps about protecting the town or she just might not be in into that. Um, do you go out to meet Tim Dolphin? Uh, yes. And I may okay. have preemptively checked to see if I could find a rabbit. And as you get out the door, you've now got a really big conundrum in front of you because there's a rabbit directly in front of you, but you also see Tim dashing down the side of the inn to the right and you need to choose which way to go. Going for the rabbit. Okay. So as Tackle and Thaddeus begin sort of walking around the tavern, um, talking to different people, um, there's a lot of kind of good positive uh, feel to the area of that people are just happy to be, you know, have been rescued and escaped. Um, but when you get sort of closer to the bar, there's like a group of um, people that appear to be like a caravaneer. And um, they speak of there being uh, a huge magical explosion in Belliard. I was going to ask uh, about that and decided not to. So they described to you that there were a group of silent pilgrims on the way to the settlement, and um, they, they, they sort of talk about their garb, uh, which you guys both immediately recognize as, like, cultists, garbs and they talk about this strange symbology that you guys recognize as um the barbecue cult people from the uh, air cult air cult okay uh they were carrying a box which has these these you know these strange uh, elemental symbols on it that you guys uh, recognize the uh did, um they saw these people heading into the town as they were heading out and about an hour later there was this giant just sort of explosion of, of, of air and lightning. And, the, you know, they went back to Belliard and uh, the whole town itself is, is gone. Well, I'm glad we didn't take any time to make uh, friends or relations there. That would have been awkward at this age. All right, so uh, the air cult has killed Belliard. Many townspeople are injured. The survivors are tending to the wounded in makeshift shelters, etc. this kind of thing. And Tim and I are present to get any of this information. Uh, you guys aren't. No, no, I'm sure we'll resolve that for you guys. No, uh, we're finding out if rats can be yeah, rabbits. Yeah, just to be not. clear, it sounds like Tim is betting on the rat, and I'll be betting on the rabbit. I believe that's. Well, it the depends point. if the rat comes from behind or not. We'll we'll get to that when we get there. <laughs> so if you both roll, by Moradin's like holy or to balls, there's to vengeance the to be had. Hmm. You're gonna do what? I'm using lightning lure to pull the rat 10 feet toward me. Okay. Doesn't that hurt it? Yes. Well, Can I downcast a cantrip so it's only 1d8 damage? <laughs> nope. You nope. can so use non-lethal damage, so all your attacks can be non-lethal. 2d8 non-lethal. Okay. I can lightning lure non-lethal? Apparently. That doesn't make sense. You kill a rat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I, I, I hear a loud zap and I think, oh, he's already cut his rabbit. Back. Sorry. As you reach for the rabbit, you hear this sound and the squeak of a rat. You know what's happened. Wait, isn't it on? Like, isn't it bleeding out, or is that only for? Uh... <laughs> I have a healing potion. <laughs> oh, for God. fuck's sake! If you, you burn just, a healing you potion, you did nine lightning damage to a rabbit. Rat. That has a rat, sorry. That has like two health. It was non lethal lightning damage, I thought. <laughs> you just dip the rat into the potion. I, think, I, think think, I don't think you can make non lethal magic damage. Okay. The rat didn't even make it to the fight, Dolphidius. <laughs> <laughs> That's a default. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I just kind of pump my fist, and I, uh, as, I, as I do this, the rabbit just scurries away. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, uh, I want to talk to the people of, uh, who were in Belliard and ask them, you know, uh, they so they describe the the people who are responsible for it. I want mm -hmm. to ask kind of where they were in relationship. Were they just not seen by that group of people, or 
And was, was something specific? Was there like a, a epicenter of that explosion? Was there something that was targeted in Belliard or just the town as a whole? Like what type of damage was caused there? Just like indiscriminate killing or specific building blown up or what? Okay. <clears throat> so they described that they're just traders and they were they went to Belia to you know, trade some of their stock and then they moved away and they saw that these people were coming in and so then they just looked like you know maybe some strange religious people and they were doing some sort of ceremony um and then after they were you know about an hour's distance away there was a crazy explosion of power and a powerful windstorm that seemed to just tear the place apart um they described that it would be on that they feel it would be unlikely that they targeted a specific thing because the area was so massive it just seemed to affect the entire town did they go back to look for survivors or help they did and they you know they gave people sort of provisions that they could but they you know they had to move on what was they the state of the the town i mean I, clearly there's it's been devastation but any specific patterns that devastation that they noticed were just random people hurt or were there a particular group who had been killed or was anything happening out of the ordinary after this crazy storm like so they said that the survivors described that the cultists that you that you would, you'd know them as cultists marched to the center of the town, opened the box, took out some kind of strange orb, and then ran for the hills, leaving the orb behind. Minutes later, the explosion happened, and now that the townspeople are just sort of trying to help the survivors and tend to the wounded in these makeshift shelters. Okay. Um... How is the leadership of Belliard? Were they all dead when they were there, or was someone did someone take in charge of that? Or uh, they don't know. They okay. didn't really know who was in charge. I like the way you think we could take over there to establish control at both ends of a trade route. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is. That's what I was thinking about for sure. Um, it's a bit disturbing. These cultists are feeling so. So free to move around the open, though, that they're just willing to walk in in broad daylight in view of however many people destroy a town, not kill all the survivors so they're visible and leave again. That's pretty, pretty bold. Uh, do any of the merchants that we're chatting with have any, did anyone, did any of these cultists be hurt? Were they heard saying anything besides their chanting? Did they make any demands? Did they make any they were threats? So bear in mind, they went there when the... I understand, but they went back and yeah. talked to survivors. So, um, they, they didn't really... Yeah, there's not really any information about that. It just looks like it was a... Just a... Almost to them, it was like a random attack, I suppose. Like, they don't know any motives or any sort of reasons that they would have done that. Okay, and that was the air cultists from the symbols? Yeah. Okay. And they left the box. That was a deploy and leave. It was like a bomb. Yeah, essentially. Were there any... Um, I'll ask just one more question of these guys before we move on. Were there any shards or remnants of this weapon that were recovered? No. Okay. All right. uh, I guess uh, Tim and I can at this point return to the bar, correct? So Yeah, you two seem to come in in like this sort of camaraderie, bravado-y kind of... No, yeah. rats are better. No, rabbits are better. <laughs> Arguing I, uh, as you're getting in. I, I point to the bar and I say, a round's on you this time because he lost. But the rounds are free. The, dr yeah. the drinks are free, but I pay no attention to that because I'm so happy about having the fact that I just won the bet. Is Tim, like, covered in, like, rat gut? Because <laughs> Lightning Lord pulls it towards you. That's what the spell does. So he, like, pulls it, it and it explodes, would, right? It would pull the target if it didn't kill it on impact. And just to be clear, Tim did not pick up the dead brat and bring it with him. Tim. <laughs> I'm just already buying you a drink. I can't respond to that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm asking <laughs> you to buy me a drink. You don't have to buy me a drink. Well, I'll continue making small talk with the town. Uh, kind of be out there. I just want to be out in, in this bar and visible for a while, a couple hours uh, before we um, go to bed. I'm also interested in following up um, there there was a little bit of bandit problem in this local area in addition to Red Lurch or just Red Lurch I thought it was all along the trail from Red Lurch to yeah, here I presume it was uh, these guys the guys we dealt with in the all along the Cairn Road is that true yeah but 
studies, aren't you thinking those are the same bandits we dealt with? Yeah, so I wanted to follow up on that and um, oh, good call, good thought. Fi find out if there was... Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to decide whether we say, hey, we've killed all those fuckers and we've got their boat. Um, we're the... Or whether we say we've eliminated the bandits and those blue and white folks are still around or what well, oh, yeah, i think whether... if anyone asks to ask mention about our colors we have assumed leadership of a mercenary company of uh you know which makes total sense given our uh our adventurous pasts and our heroic deeds thus far it makes total sense that we would easily and rapidly in the space of 48 hours rise through the ranks and otherwise <laughs> to convince them <laughs> Um, and of course, we would not say that we have acquired a boat because then it's not necessarily our boat. It would be uh, we, well, we have solved the bandit problem, and we are looking to appropriate well, come to any appropriate authorities to turn in for the reward. That that's the question: is whether we say we've largely solved the bandit problem. Yeah, but maybe not to these people. Perhaps we use that as an intro to the captain of the guard tomorrow when we meet her. That would be ah. something to bring up to her, perhaps not as relevant to well, the merchants. Right, so, so I thought I would ask these people about whether there was still a bandit problem. Yeah, sounds good. You ask if there's been any report of like bandit raids in the last couple of days. Um, okay, so they've traveled from Belia down the sort of eastern side. Yeah. Um, so they have no... They describe that there hasn't really been any um, attacks on their caravans, and they haven't heard any from other people on the eastern side of the river. Um, in terms of local sort of gossip from what they've heard things seem okay no attacks have been sort of reported for maybe four or five days okay um i'm gonna pull the uh the innkeep Na that's nasker nasker i think is an l yeah nasker that's uh i think that for you <clears throat> ah. he is a uh male half elf that you can tell um i'm going to pull nalasker um aside and say so tell me more about this ridiculous job that you would have heroes guarding your your inn for you while you travel about what is this job you're interested in giving us okay two seconds What's the name of those shots that you take where they have a rat skull in them? <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Oh, the Nibbler. I've had seven <laughs> of those in my lifetime. I've never enjoyed any of them. Here you go, Dolphidius. It's a Nibbler. <laughs> I take it, and I, I, I politely nod. And then when Tim's not looking, I dig the skull out and kind of throw it into the corner of the inn and uh, take the shot. All right. Well, okay. I guess, um, okay. <laughs> Why don't you lick a wall while you're at it, fool? <laughs> Was that to Dolphidius or Tim? <laughs> Both of you. Tim. So, <laughs> now let's get to the The barge right in uh, depends on a regular supply run downriver uh, by barge from Yatar. Uh, but its supply, its regular supply boat is overdue. So he's mounting a supply run to Waterdeep to talk matters with his superiors, and he needs somebody to mine the inn in his absence. Waterdeep is... Southwest? Is that super far north? That's, um... That's never winter. It's north, right? Yeah. Where's Waterdeep? South. Deep is here, which was where the uh, delegation would have ended up. Ah. Uh... Well, I mean, isn't he going about this backwards? Yeah, there we go. There you go. Maybe Can we have like the city stay in the inn, and the adventurers should go look to see what happened to their supply train? Well, well no, we he... should have the city guard. Mind He's them. going south to Waterdeep. He's not going looking for the supply problem. He's going to go do something in Waterdeep about it. Oh right, because he said Yarter. Is that what he said? Yeah, yeah Yarter is the place to the north. Okay. So right. we could take over those shipments. I don't trust Chalaska, okay? She may be in charge of the guard, and she's got 40 guards, but she runs the community, and, you know, look, I just, I like handling my work myself. 
if you guys want to look after my info me while I do that, that would be a wonderful boon. If not, I can try and find some others to do that. And when you say look after it, what do you mean? Like, you know, you've just got to like, yeah, collect money, make sure serve, serve. someone doesn't come in and break my stuff. Make sure there's no fights. You know. I won't be gone long. Do you have staff? This is a chance to get involved in the internal politicking of the city. Yeah, it sounds amazing. We're gonna set up in the tavern and uh, work out what's going on with this guard leader and stuff. Or we could go to Yartar and work out why the shipments aren't here. Or we could provide other shipments and become rich. <laughs> Tim. Tim, I'm not so opposed. Money. I'm not opposed to setting up a shipping route between Yartar and here, but I believe we have business in Red Larch. Yeah. yeah business in Balliard, too. Look, all, all it has to be is one of you just gets my keys and, and becomes the innkeeper. All you've got to do is ensure that the inner doors remain safe and you know, the trade and the logistical, everything is, is, is just looked after while I'm gone. So as we he's saying, tell us that we're gonna do that and then give it to like some villager at random. I think that would probably not maintain our good reputation. Yes, I, I can until. see in a town this large that would never get to him. News of his own inn. Well, he's gonna be—he's going south. Like he won't know. He's not gonna make it back. That's for sure. We're gonna be stuck or in he... this inn forever. No, over. I'm making it back. We 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 just retire. We we make this one decision, and it's a default retirement. <laughs> this is like one of you know. This is a choose your own adventure, and this is one of the paths that ends in death. That's right. It's like death through yeah. slow, <laughs> through slow. Yeah, death through old age as as as, as barmaids. Yeah. My God, it's true. Oh. Polymorph innkeeper. It's the the choice of Achilles. This is staying home and farming. That's right. But no one will know your name. <laughs> That's right. All right, on that note, I think we're going to cut the part here. Uh, we'll see you guys in just a moment, and uh, thanks for watching.